With the Dow just tickling up against 18,000 individual stocks like Home Depot, Disney and Apple at record highs, now might seem to be the perfect time to cash out. Take a little breather, but not everybody agrees with that. Let's bring in our panel. We have Rich Colgard, Forbes publisher and columnist, Jeff Reeves, InvestorPlace.com editor, and our own Adam Shapiro. Jeff, is it time to cash in? I mean, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I love this market. If you want me to give you reasons I love the market, I mean, let me count the ways. We're almost at all-time highs again on the S&P. Jobs numbers were killer. Housing continues to improve, even if the pace isn't as good as it used to be. Um, we've got oil prices that are low, put more money in consumers' pockets. We've got a lack of alternatives because China and Europe kind of stink. I mean, I, I, I could go on until the hour's up, but I think there's a lot of reasons to be bullish. And let's not forget that the market kind of went downward uh, at the beginning of last year. Beginning of 2014 in January, we saw a 4% contraction. We figured up double digits on the entire year. Okay, so, but I mean, Rich, we can finish a lot higher. First than this of all, will. Rich, the old adage: you sell high, and it's it's as high as it's just about ever been right now. Plus, you have all these problems over in Europe and China and everything else. I mean, if wouldn't it be great just to count your profits right now and cash out? Uh, you know, you might trim a little off. I did a couple of months ago and paid off a mortgage. And uh, look, the earnings growth are slowing. I think the market is going to be likely flat for the rest of the year. But I don't think we're in for any big decline. Uh, so, And it's very hard to time the market. So generally speaking, I think you should stay in. I agree with Jeff. Adam? Uh, I would say that maybe you can get out and maybe put your money in Europe with all of the QE that's about to take place. But here, this comes that's from facts. That's a good suggestion. Earnings and revenue growth uh, are expected to fall in Q1. 2015 Q2 2015 year over year. So this might be a time to maybe shift your, your assets to Europe. All right. We're going to shift our discussion a little bit, but staying on Wall Street for a moment. Wall Street clearly loves what the Federal Reserve has been doing over the past four years. But is the Fed favoring Wall Street investors over Main Street savers? Rich Cargarb, what do you think? Yes, they are, but it's a bank shot. That's not their original intent. What they think, they're of the belief that if they raise interest rates, it's going to slow this fragile recovery, so they keep them low. Now, the fact that they keep them low makes stocks attractive to other investments, particularly bonds. All right. Well, Adam, Richard Fisher from Dallas right. Fed, about to retire, was on our, our air this week, suggesting that with the various ways of how to change that balance more in favor of Main Street? Do you think he's on to something? I, I, well, first of all, he's the smartest man I've ever met, so I'm not going to disagree with him. But I would say if you want to give some more balance to Main Street, perhaps give the San Francisco Federal Reserve Bank some kind of enhanced powers. But it's all about liquidity, and money is what greases the system, and the center of that is New York. Well, Jeff, that is one of the things that Richard Fisher says, is that right away the head of the New York Fed has enormous power, no matter who's in power. So, I mean, it does seem to be weighted in favor of Wall Street, no? I mean, yes and no. I mean, I, I do think it's important to, to, to acknowledge at least the fact that Mr. Fisher has kind of been uh, the most hawkish and outspoken member of the Fed for a long time. So I don't but think this it's a big deal to Because waves. this is something that e even John Hilsenrath from the Wall Street Journal, who's a, who's a good friend of members of the Fed, has said this is so. This is kind of a, a new mandate ever since QE started to, to look with extra special care at what Wall Street is doing. I mean, I, I don't necessarily think that the Fed cares too much about Wall Street. I mean, I'm not going to act like they don't care. There's been a huge effort for transparency at the Fed. I mean, personally, I kind of think the Fed's gone a little bit too far with all these pre press conferences and the circus around it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think investors and the public should be careful what they wish for with some of this. I, I'm not one of, uh, of the mind where we should have, have to audit the Fed or make them politically okay. accountable or anything like that. So I, I think we need to be careful what we wish for. I think this is just an outspoken member of the Fed who's getting some parting yeah, shots before he sells out to the Rich, sunset bottom this year. line is, Rich, and we don't have much time it's not just Richard Fisher who's saying this. A lot of other people are uh, that, in fact, savers are being hurt at the expense of Wall Street. Well, savers should be, you know, they should be investing in ETFs is all I can say. You've okay. got to play them as they lie. You can't fight the market. Thank you, guys.